Right, so guys, welcome back to the shop. Um, going to do a quick shop tour with you today. Not done one before, so I thought it would be a good time to do one. Um, I was in here the other day giving it a good clean and then tidying up and putting all the tools away. So while it's clean and tidy, but we'll just go through a quick tour where I'll talk about some of the tools that I've got. Um, and talk about some of the things I like about the shop, some things that I don't like. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in a sec. Okay, so this is the view from the shop as you walk in. So over here we've got the uh, thickness of planer chop saw. There is the um, belt and disc sander surface planer underneath. Underneath the chart, the uh, the cart is the scroll saw, band saw. Behind the band saw is the drill press. Let's zoom in there. And then we've got the wood storage, the can store. All this stuff over here in the corner is all my stuff for the market. Underneath there is also boxes and stuff for the market. Um, you can see the lathe. There's the pen blank rack. Um, that up there is um, sandpaper storage, clamps, and then the tool wall coming round here. So my drills, sanders, nailer, um, little router. And then there's my toolbox. So there's my shop vac and dust collector. Um, that is a, t a storage place for tins of paint. Um, over here is one of the first, well, the first shop cabinet I ever made out of pa pallet wood. Um, it is atrocious. Um, the, even the drawers aren't even the same size. Um, it was cobbled together just using scrap wood it was a, a quick solution but I've had it now for about four years that's the first thing to go this year I'm gonna make a new cabinet from underneath there so all of this space here will have a brand new cabinet and we'll stop storing junk that way hopefully that's the plan hey so my my biggest pet peeve about this place is the lighting is terrible um, I have two double three foot long fluorescent tubes and a single um, only one of the tubes works um, and what I have is a bathroom light um, with or a bedroom light with four spot lamps on and three bulbs rigged up on a, an extension lead and then I have the one fluorescent tube that works up here so my plan this year is to get three or four brand new electrical outlets on the ceiling for the fluorescent tubes with some LED tubing get rid of those and brighten up the place I'd love to paint the walls white in here as well um, at the moment everything is this grey brick so it's quite dark in here for filming um, and there's quite a lot of shadows so if I brighten up the walls white and then improve the lighting that's going to be a big help here I have the um, this is a thickness and planer, uh, but I only have it, have it set up in thickness and mode uh, because changing this cowl out to put it underneath and get it locked in with the safety lock is a pain in the neck. So I have a separate surface planer which is here um, on my mobile cart. Um, this is the disc and drum sander, and it's one of those ones that that tilts up, and you can move the bed round. Um, I've never used it in that mode. I wouldn't know why you would. Um, and then underneath that is my scroll saw, probably my least used tool in the shop. Um, my sliding compound miser saw, which is the SIP 10 inch compound miser saw. Um, I got that at the same time as the thicknesser and the table saw. Um, and it's probably one of my least used tools because in the past it was in a place where it was difficult to get it out to use. Um, but now it's there, it's permanently plugged in. Um, and to use it is now case of just being able to pull it out, set it up and away we go and there's our, our laser there, it's ready to rock. Um, one thing I would like to do in my next shop would be to have a permanent mitre saw station as opposed to having it on wheels um, but that's a long way off yet. Here's my new bandsaw, and there's a video out on the, the unboxing of this one. Um, this was my third purchase of the year for tools, um, and one I should have done before any of the others I upgraded. Um, 
this thing is fantastic i love this tool um, i'm using it a lot um, i've been playing around with it recently um, my old band sort of had a little bench top one you would have seen that in all my past videos the blade drift on that was terrible um, it wouldn't cut in a straight line uh, no matter how much I fiddled with the bearings and the setup, it just—it was just rubbish. Um, the bed, the table bed was plastic and that was bent, so I replaced it with a wooden one which warped, um, and it was just a truly awful saw. And you couldn't do anything. It was only good for really for cutting up pen blanks and um, a bit of firewood really. Uh, but this thing is a beaut. It's an absolute beast. Really heavy, good cast iron table, really nice strong blade, and out of the box without having to tweak anything this thing runs absolutely true there is no blade drift in it um, it's great for resawing and I was in it yesterday and I was cutting up some uh, veneers it's a little piece of oak with a, with a mahogany veneer on it which is nice um, wasn't able to do that on my old one um, I've got a new blade coming and um, that should be here sometime this week um, which is a 1 8 6 tooth TPI skip tooth blade uh, for doing bandsaw boxes so I'm looking forward to that arriving uh, but that's an absolute beast if you're looking for a bandsaw I recommend this one this is the Charmwood B350 it's a beaut so over here is my um, dust collector it sits next to the table saw next to the bandsaw um, and it's actually in an ideal situation uh, an ideal location because I can hook it to the table saw I can hook it up to the lathe and the lathe is on the bench and I can also hook it up now to the back of the, the bandsaw and I don't need to move the dust collector um, it's a little bit underpowered I think I could do with maybe another horsepower on that one uh, but it's okay it does the job so far um, it's noisy but you know that's the the trade-off you need to you need to have good dust collection I would eventually love to have a permanent dust collection system in here where everything could be hooked up um, but you know I'm in rented accommodation here this isn't my garage so I, I I can't really invest in that just yet uh, but when we get our own place and we move and we have a dedicated shop that will be one of the priorities is getting a good dust collection and that then will probably sit outside and I'll, I'll hook it up to a power switch uh, but I'm pleased with it it's good well worth it though behind the bandsaw lives my um, drill press this is my first big investments in tools for the year um, I had a very small very noisy um, drill press and it wasn't very accurate it was good so I um, I saved up and I got myself um, a good one um, this is the B1616 SIP it's the mid-range one and um, the first one of the things I did do recently was I changed the chuck from the original standard chuck um, with the key to a keyless chuck and that is a game saver that was cheap and cheerful from Amazon I think I paid 35 pounds for it plus the shipping um, but I do a lot of pen turning and some of the kits that I do have two different size drills so the body is one and the lid is another so being able to just quickly um, change these out is an absolute dream so I can put the the drill in and that's it it's done away you go and you can drill and then when you need to change it you just turn it back and you pop in your new one Dad. and away you go that is really good I recommend if you've got a drill press get yourself one of these keyless chucks and I hummed and hard over this for a while and it's uh, it's been a great investment um, little table press uh, there's a video out on this one as well um, and I use that then for clamping down the the uh, the, pren, the the press while I'm while I'm drilling. Uh, it's on a mobile cart as well. Um, again, there's a video for that, um, and that's got a drawer contains all the bits and stuff. Okay, on the back wall here is my lathe. It's the Charmwood W824. Um, had this couple of weeks now. Just had to replace the control module on it, which was annoying. Um, it was faulty from day one. Um, which I didn't realise, but it's, I've replaced it now. I've just launched a video on that. Um, I'll leave a link in the. There's a little card that's just popped up at the top of the screen. Since I've replaced that, um, it's a dream come true. The lathe is so nice to, to work with, it's so much better. Um, there's a bowl that I turned the other night. Um, unfortunately, I went through the bottom, um, so I'm, I'm a member of the funnel club now. 
um, but I'll plug that and I'll, I'll turn that back down. Um, the lathe itself though is an absolute dream. Um, one of the things that I bought for the lathe um, is um, a 2MT, the Axminster Evolution Compression Pen Mandrel. Um, not cheap, but well worth the investment. It, this is a really nice bit of kit to use um, compared to the old pen mandrel where it's a, a bar with a, a nut on the end that you you push that you, you tighten up and the problem with that is if you over tighten it you can you can bow the mandrel and um, this one it doesn't you tighten up on the headstock and it, it pushes against the bearings and the bushings as opposed to the the, 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 the bar itself um, they are really good if you want to get older one I'll leave a link in the description down below brilliant bit of kit um, the lathe itself is really heavy. I'm not sure if this is a permanent place where it's going to live yet because it's quite high up on that bench. It normally works on the workbench down below, but when it's on there, that means my Daddy, workbench is out of action. Okay, and uh, on to the heart of the, ta of the, the workshop. This is my table saw. It's the SIP 10 inch cabinet table saw, um, and it was my first big investment in the shop. It's my third table saw to date. Um, the first one I had, I got from um, the catalogue shop that we all know um, and it was a truly awful thing and how it never chopped my hand off is beyond me um, and then I upgraded from that to an Axminst, uh, to sorry, uh, an Ironhell 10 inch uh, blade which used to sit in a cabinet here uh, and that worked quite well, I had that for a couple of years uh, but the fence system wasn't great on it um, and then I upgraded to this thing which is an absolute dream come true uh, most of the time when I've got little ones about sits here and the blade is down so if they do hit the switch there's no danger of them cutting themselves. The fence can go either side. Uh, the gearing system for the height adjustment is really good. It doesn't take much to put that to full height. There we go. And then to wind it down. The fence system on it is fantastic. It, it holds really really well. Um, it clips on at the back and it clips on at the front um, and it's solid and pretty much from day one it's I'm square. I'm making my snake. There's also a, a handle on the side so the blade tilts 45 um, and it tilts from vertical over to the right. So you can see it tilting that way. Um, which means that the fence goes on that side and I'm cutting with my non-dominant hand which isn't perfect but my least favourite cut is the mitre cut. Uh, but I love this saw, it's fantastic. Um, best investment I ever did. Uh, on the end of the rail of the table saw is where I keep my uh, face shield, uh, my ear defenders with the built in radio. Brilliant little bit of kit, that. Uh, my old ear defenders were broken, um, the clip snapped on it, this little thing here. Um, so when I was wearing them, I used to have to hold on to that and try and put them on. Um, bit of a nightmare. Um, but because the the headband swivelled, it was good for wearing with the face shield, this, these don't do that, so it's a bit uncomfortable with the face shield on, uh, but straight off, um, and a small dust mask, um, which I got online, it's okay, does the job, um, and they all live sort of here on the end of the rail, and then underneath you can see that I've got um, all my push sticks and stuff. So this is just a view of the shop from the back corner, this just shows you. Uh, the garage itself, the workspace inside, it's um, well, the external diameter, is, it's a 6 metre by 4 metre shop um, and there's quite a lot of wasted space in here, I would like to do a little bit. Uh, so that's it for the shop tour guys, I hope you enjoyed it, having a little look around my space. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, leave it in the, uh, the comment section down below. Um, I'll try and come back to each and every one of you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next one. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.